Welcome to SSU TV Live. My name is Ian Loney with Abraham DeWeese and Matt Page. And we're here to talk about the Seahawks and specifically some of the recent contract issues. Uh, in particular, Michael Bennett, who's asked for a new contract. So, Matt, what do you think of all that? Pay the man. Pay the man, period. How so? Why so? Why? Because he does a lot for us. He takes a lot of heat on that defensive line, and he does a lot more than ride the bicycle after the stealing from the police on the on the field. I see. Okay, I see what you're saying, but you know, here's the deal. He plays a position that is replaceable. We've already got a replacement. We've got Frank Clark. Frank, Frank Clark is going to be the next Michael Bennett. We don't need to pay him. Are you implying that Michael Bennett beats people? <laughs> Oh, too soon. Allegedly, uh, too beats soon. People. Allegedly, allegedly, allegly beats. Oh, people. police reports are you know. Okay, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't. Wouldn't mind putting you know Michael Bennett and or I'm sorry Frank Clark in a room with Seth Blatter, but the thing. Is, <laughs> so you think that they're going to be able to develop Clark? I think they can develop. The they can Bennett. develop Clark into the next Michael Bennett. I agree. With, yes. Well, then definitely. what about just signing him for a one year deal? Well, he's already signed for a deal. Why doesn't he just fulfill his contract? Well, it's football. No contracts guaranteed. And he's already being pretty well paid. I mean, they he's, signed him to a pretty solid contract already. He's the highest paid player at both, if you include the linebacker position plus the defensive line position. He's, he's the highest paid player in the front seven. Good. He should be. He should be, and that's yeah, good. That's he should be, yeah. <laughs> so fulfill your contract. We got a replacement for you. His name is Frank Clark out of the University of Michigan. Okay. I, All right. Now, that said, there's also another uh, much bigger contract looming in Russell Wilson. Um, rumors are that it's going to be around uh, $22 million a year, um, and that you still haven't actually come to an agreement on that. That seems to be the figure that's floating around right now. What do you guys think of that, and what should be the limit given the Seahawks issues with cap space and other things? My main concern is to leave enough money in the budget for Bobby Wagner, another player who needs to be signed. But uh, in general, you cannot find a more dynamic, more immediate impacting, uh, more useful, more incredible quarterback in the league. The only one who comes close is Andrew Luck, but he, he isn't nearly as dynamic or as important, in my opinion, to his offense. And you need to pay the guy. Basically, in my opinion, he's worth it. Pay the man. NFL is quarterback driven league. It really it's is. It's the single most important position in any team sport across all sports. Twenty two million is more than more than fair. I don't think you need to go higher than that. If that's where the Seahawks have set the demarcation point, then Wilson needs to maybe acquiesce a little bit and work with the Seahawks. But you gotta pay the guy. There's other there's other quarterbacks getting paid more, a lot more than he is. Yeah. He's making Not what lot, in his fourth yeah. No, a lot. In his fourth year with the Seahawks, he's making He's, he's one still point. on slave wages. He's, well, he's on this year he's still on slave wages, yes. Yeah, yeah. And you know, there's there's hacks. There are hacks out there. And I mean, you know, your uh uh, you know, Bridgewater's, your Carson Palmer's, they're well, Ryan Fitzpatrick is Ryan making Fitzpatrick. like three million a year. I mean, yeah, yeah. the, the T Jack, his backup is actually making three million a year, so he's making more than he is. <laughs> so, I, yeah, uh, 22 million is fair. Pay the guy. I would not like to see him leave. He's the perfect quarterback for this team, mm -hmm. he is elite. I don't know why a lot of the national pundits don't think he's elite, but he is elite, and especially in this house. Well, Ron Jaworski doesn't think he's elite, but Ron, J Ron Jaworski he, wasn't elite himself. So. He can, yeah. <laughs> he can, he can, uh, one more thing on, on Russell. The one thing he does that I... Uh, the reason why I absolutely love the guy to death, he does the little things. When he's done with a drive, we go, we march down the field and we score a touchdown. He, he, you know, he high fives and celebrates with the guys, but he runs immediately right back to the bench, sits down, pulls out the notebook, and he's back to studying. Yep. He is constantly studying, trying to improve his game. And another thing, another note, he missed practice this week because he went with Jimmy Graham mm -hmm. for a funeral. Yeah. So he's already bonding with his new, yeah, with his new developing receiver. the relationship developing chemistry. with his new, his new wide receiver number one target, which shows he's going the extra mile, and he's worth it. He's absolutely he worth it. He definitely is. I mean, you know, off the field, off the field, off definitely. The field, yeah. On the field, okay. So I'm not a stats guy, but let me throw some things out there at you guys. 3,500 yards in the air, 800 plus yards on the ground. You're talking about, you know, 20 some odd touchdowns passing, another half dozen running. Michael Vick put up those numbers, elite. 
Mm-hmm. Randall Cunningham put up those numbers. Elite. elite. Mm-hmm. Steve Young put up those numbers. Elite. Mm-hmm. You know, John Elway. You know, the list goes on for running quarterbacks. Mm. They're all elite. Your Fran Tarkentons, your Roger yeah. Staubachs. Yes. Why Russell Wilson, why does he get this? Because stigma? he's too short. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, okay, fine. You convinced me. As a short answer. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> no, no, frankly. From the 6th three guy and the six two guy he's too short i honestly think that has a lot to do with it is that people still aren't convinced that he's tall enough to be a quarterback they have this they have this idea of a six foot four 220 pound quarterback prototype prototype that russell wilson simply does not fit but he's made he's clearly compensated for that he makes up for it in a dozen kind of ways finds passing lanes, manages to get open. He never gets hit hard, well, rarely anyway, for, especially for a running quarterback. Even for a pocket passer, he doesn't get hit that much. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to disagree with you, though. Uh, America fell in love with Drew Brees. They fell in love with Doug Flutie. You know, America fell in love with these little quarterbacks, but not Russell Wilson. Well, America fell in love with Doug Flutie, but America, frankly, doesn't like the Seahawks very much. Okay, I'm okay with that. And they have reasons for that. (laughs) That's fine. That's my team. Mm -hmm. I don't care for this. (laughs) Go to to heck, America. (laughs) Don't make me come out there. Yeah, as far as teams we hate, though, we have seen the, the downfall of of a, of a small team called the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, Santa Clara 49ers? Santa Clara 49ers. I don't, I don't know any San Francisco we, football team. We've seen the retirement of Justin Smith and, and Patrick Willis. Their defense looks in absolute shambles. Their offense looks in absolute shambles. It's going to be a fun year. Do you guys see this smile? I am so yeah. happy. <laughs> well, the 49ers are so awful. <laughs> Harbaugh was the biggest loss though it's kind of it's kind of hard it, it, it's 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 happy but at the same time i'm kind of disappointed because it was the greatest rivalry mm-hmm. in NFL. it was a lot of fun to watch mm-hmm. you look forward to that game on the schedule harbaugh was there and you know the sherman and the baldwin backstories with him and and so there was it was personal and it, and it was it was really the best rivalry in nfl in the last Maybe three or four years. You you are correct. Even though I'm very happy about the demise, the probable demise yeah. of the 49ers, uh, Edge gets sharpened with stone. Oh yeah, not with marshmallows. They made us better. Yes, they mm-hmm. really did. They pushed us to excel. Yes, but and, you know Harbaugh was their biggest loss, and everything else has kind of crumbled after that. That guy is freaking amazing in the University of Michigan. Are going to do amazing with him. They are. He might take a few years. He's amazing, but, but he has a tendency to wear out his welcome, and that's what happened in San Francisco. Well, you know what? Sometimes you have to put up with madness, you know, for your art. Although, I will say this. I think to a certain extent he got out while the getting was good because you see that the defense was getting old. The defense mm-hmm. that Singletary built and then that Harbaugh came in and perfected and Gore was getting Gore's old. All the, I mean, everyone there is... I mean, that team was on the back end of its curve anyway. Yeah, you know, you bring, bring up an interesting point. Sing, Mike Singletary had talent, couldn't do anything with it. Greg Nolan had talent, couldn't do anything with it. And that's where I get mm-hmm. back to. Harbaugh... Yeah. I had talent. Took him to the Super Bowl and to two other championship games. Yeah, he did well. And and now moving looking forward for them, there's they're, I mean they're going to have to pretty much start all over. I mean looking at just for example their number one draft pick was uh, Eric Armstead out of Oregon and he's the rawest defensive rusher in the draft. He had the most potential highest ceiling, but he was the most raw kid. So they, what they've taken what they had to do is they've had to take on a lot of projects, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's. It's going to be a lot of years before they're back on top again, or at least challenging us again. So that said, as far as the Seahawks competitors in the division this year, it's between it seems to be between the Rams and the Cardinals. What do you guys think as far as who's the most legitimate out of those guys? I say this is the year that the <laughs> wrong. I say this is the year that the Rams take over. Ooh. And I love Nick Foles. You love Nick Foles. I love Nick Foles. I don't think Carson Palmer is good. I think Carson Palmer is going to break his ankle about, I don't know, four or five games in the season. The Cardinals are going to spiral into the death throws that they did last year. Mm -hmm. So a repeat of last year. A repeat of last year, exactly. Mm -hmm. I like Nick Foles on the Rams offense. 
That Rams defense is amazing. Oh, it's crazy. The Rams have this tendency to have great draft after great draft, and then they suck. And I don't understand why, but they... But well, they, their quarterback went down, down, kept going down. Sam Bradford was always injured. Right, but they're a team that's built much like the Seahawks. They're a defense-first, run-the-ball team. Yeah, Todd Gurley, and Todd Gurley was their number one draft pick. Right. They're looking to ram the ball down people's throats. They are, and they With without offensive Which line now. A great draft pick, by the way. I yeah. think it was one of the best picks in the draft. Yeah. But, I, I, he's I mean, okay, but I mean, like, I I, I, I devalue running backs quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I understand why the NFL has gone to this model of not drafting running backs in the first round. Mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, because you can... They're interchangeable, in your opinion? Well, or? yes and no. They're kind of like closers in baseball. There's four or five that are extremely good. Your mm-hmm. Marshawn Lynch's, Adrian Peterson's, and then there's a bunch of guys that are basically essentially the same person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Zach Stacy, same thing as no. any other running back out there. Mm-hmm. Now, they got rid of Zach Stacy, mm-hmm. uh, but... You know, Gurley should be an upgrade, but I, I don't I don't really know if Gurley's in that. So you don't think Gurley comes into that feature back category? He'll no. still be a platoon guy, just like a lot uh, of them, or like a one two punch. Yeah, I think thing. I think he's going to be a platoon ultimately because I don't know if he has the durability hmm. to be a Marshawn Lynch yeah. to carry the team or a Ray Rice pre. All the outside and off the field stuff who carried Baltimore. Again, to reiterate, I think the Nick Foles over Sam Bradford is the biggest upgrade. Just because he'll be there all season? He'll be there all season, and he's a highly accurate quarterback. He's fairly accurate. Yeah, he. Uh, I, I, on the other hand, I disagree. I think it's going to be the Cardinals. And, yeah, uh, I agree. I think they've put together a fearsome attack. They've uh, they've really they've got that offense ready to go. And uh, Larry Fitzgerald wants a win, wants a ring. And uh, Larry, Larry Fitzgerald's Fitzgerald, going to go out and get one. Larry They're, Fitzgerald took a pay cut this year. He wants a ring to help the salary. But do not discount that uh, Washington, Daryl Washington, their amazing linebacker. Gone. Mm-hmm. Darnell Dockett, gone. Cromartie, gone. And the defense was, again, the key, like all the NFC West, the defense is kind of the key to the Cardinals. A big thing for them is Carson Palmer has to stay healthy this year. Absolutely. Not going to happen. If, if he goes down again, they're going to be sunk just like last no, year. If, gonna... if, if he, okay, yeah, th- that's very true. But if he stays healthy, I, I can totally see them winning 12. Yeah. Absolutely good. No, no. No, not going to happen. Not going to happen. They're well coached. Carson Palmer well coached. will get injured. Our technical director, Bob Lucky, will be quarterback, and he'll get injured. And then you'll get Max Hall, or you'll get some other schlub. Skeletor? Skele- yeah, Red Skeleton, or <laughs> all these just <laughs> junior college quarterbacks they seem to come uh, up Logan with. Thomas, who Look. was so bad they decided not to start him. <laughs> oh, that made me smile, too. That's so amazing. Uh, they'll bring up Connor Holiday or something. Uh, he's already retired. He retired. Oh, did he? Yeah, before, uh, before the, the Redskins. Redskins. He should, he, uh, before he even showed up for practice, he oh, retired. Wow. Yeah. That's too bad, but I mean, like, the kid... Um, the kid could throw. He, he just kept getting injured, and I think he just got to the point where... Too many injuries. Over oh, did you him. see the, his career-ending injury at Wazoo, though? Uh, yeah, they kept replaying it over and over again. Horrifying. It was Joe Theismann-esque. Yes, it was. <laughs> and, and then the year before that, he had like a lacerated liver. Yeah, he, mm-hmm. he, he, he got put through the ringer, definitely. Oh, well. Well, all that brings us to something that we have to kind of keep the bitter pill about last year's Super Bowl about, and that comes about. So the the investigation, the rather belated investigation into the Flake Gate came out recently, and it turns out that, according to the NFL, Tom Brady probably, quote-unquote, knew all about it. And so what do you guys think about all that? And guilty. Does it, does it matter? He is guilty. No, it doesn't matter. Death penalty. Uh, Death they, penalty. They, they, uh, if this were college, no, that's a fair point. If this were a college, they would have they, had a history. They SMU on them? Well, yeah, they would have had a history of uh, not being able to control their uh, uh Players or lost control of the organization, or yeah, yeah, something like that. And you know, we saw it with Penn State, you know, the, the, with the Sandusky thing. We saw it with yeah, you're right, SMU, SMU, uh, University of Washington. Never actually got caught on any one single thing. It was called uh, lost institutional, of institutional control. Institutional or, control is yeah. what it was called. And you get an organization like the Patriots who have lost institutional control. Mm-hmm. They need to. They need to suffer. But what if? 
Belichick knew about it because he probably did. Uh, yeah, he probably did, but Can that's you not prove it? that's not what they proved. Yeah. So the thing is, is that what it, what it comes down to is, you know, Brady had to know. You're not you don't reach Hall of Fame talent level without knowing the tools of your trade and knowing mm-hmm. that that ball is a little squeezier than it should be. Uh, the equipment, the two equipment guys, they fired. So they knew. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fall there, guys. There yeah. had to they be... didn't fire. They put him on leave of absence. Okay, they put him on leave of absence. Even though put... they don't work in the off season. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's a non. <laughs> so they're on leave of absence in the off season. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so there, you know, there's there had to have been the center. The center has to know. The center is the one holding the ball every yeah. play too. Yeah. Uh, you know, there had to have been some 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 other people on the sideline who who knew. So it, yeah, like you said, it is a loss of institutional control, and mm-hmm. as a team, they should be punished. Now, you can't take away the two. Super Bowl because they won the Super Bowl, but in my opinion, I think they should have been judged more harshly, and they should have vacated the AFC Championship. They still won the Super Bowl, they just don't get to hang the AFC Championship banner anymore, because that's, they were proven to be cheating in that game. That's, that's the symbolic, only game. Though. That's symbolic, though. I think, But it doesn't honestly, matter. It's, 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 that's what it is. I mean, it's the, any, any, any vacating any win is symbolic. I think every Indianapolis Colts fan should get one free punch on Tom Brady. Just one free punch. <laughs> So violent today. Yeah. Just so violent. I, here's what I think should have. I, think, I, think <laughs> I feel for the I feel for the Colts fans. No, I I think they should have gotten been stripped of a couple draft picks, like a sixth and a seventh round or something like that. I think that would have been a more. Well, no, they got, they, got a, they lost their first round pick. They didn't lose their first round. They lost their first oh, round. Okay. Pick well, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so on that note, I we're going to go Brady ahead. Brady should be able to punch you once. Uh, well, so on that note, we're going to go ahead and uh, and end this episode. Thank you for watching uh, SSU TV, and uh, we'll see you next time. You saying Colts fans can't punch? Tom Brady? <laughs> <laughs>